When you go on location, it's very important to be prepared for problems. Now, that's not easy to do. How can you prepare for a problem, right? A problem is kind of a surprise. How can you be ready for a surprise? Well, I think my answer would be, you can't really be ready for one, but maybe you should be thinking just in case, and whatever happens, you at least have some possibility of doing something, right? It's not a total surprise. If you're not ready at all and something bad happens, which always happens, you have to cancel your shoot. You have to waste all your time or waste the time of the people with you. So what are some things I'm talking about to kind of be prepared? Well, here's some, some tips. Be aware of what shops are in your area, especially convenience stores for food, drinks, water, but also for batteries. Now you can get batteries at places like 7-Eleven and places like that, but not always the kinds of batteries you may need. So if you need a special small or large battery, they may not have it. They may have some types, but not all types. Sometimes Watson's stores have batteries, and of course Costco's has batteries, but Costco's only has certain types, and then you have to buy a big box of them, which actually is a great idea. If you have a big box, you're sure you're going to have enough. So think about where can I run to get batteries. Hardware stores will also have them, but be aware. If you go to a hardware store and they have old batteries sitting on the shelf, it's possible that batteries have no charge, no power. Next, this is a little bit uh, serious, but you know, something bad could happen. Do you know where the emergency services are in your area? Do you have a cell phone and can you dial emergency service, like the police, if you need something, if there's an emergency? Is there a hospital in the area or a clinic in the area? That is, that if some, what if somebody falls down and twists their leg? If they fall down and twist their leg, even though you did nothing wrong, even though everything was perfect, even though you, it's not your fault, you can't just say, oh well, your problem, I'll see you uh, next week, goodbye. You have to help them. And you have many people here shooting the video and you have equipment, so you need to, you need to be ready to do something. So if they twist their leg, you can maybe call a taxi or call an Uber and get to a hospital, but do you know where one is in the area? And if something more serious happens, you need to solve that by calling an ambulance. So be aware of that. I'm not saying something bad will happen, but just in case you really need to help the people that are with you, be aware. This is an example of how I try to avoid problems by having batteries ready. So these are rechargeable batteries. These are uh, AA, double A. These are double A, AA batteries. And these batteries are chargeable, and what I do is I charge them up, put them in a box, and then put other ones in here, and I always have a whole box full of them. And before I go on a shoot, before, before, like just hours before, I charge more and more to make sure my batteries have energy. Oh my gosh, there's nothing worse than going to a location and you find out uh, my batteries, I've got lots of batteries, but gosh, they're all empty. That is really a terrible feeling, uh, not fun at all. Okay, let's go jump back to the classroom again. And so here we are on location, and again, you can see this is the front of the room. What I did is I walked around with my little tiny uh, camera my or my phone you can even use your phone and look through your phone as a camera right you can use your phone uh, as a camera you know looking through the through the screen through the camera and just hold it and look around and say hey where is somewhere in this room that looks like it might be good where can I look that might be might be an interesting shot uh, where can I go and see what I want to see and in this case, what we wanted to see was the students making the presentation and the judges talking to them and asking questions. So I walked around, took some different angles, looked at some different possibilities, and here's one possibility. So front of the room, looking up towards the stage. Remember, the students are going to be standing here on the stage making their presentation. So this looked not too bad. The problem was that the computer is over here, and here's the podium. So if a student is standing here, 
they're gonna be really, you know, too close. In fact, this picture is not right. Their head will be like this big, you know, it'll be so close and the people standing over here will be so small. So I'm like, mm, I'm not sure that's a great angle and this is a bit in the way. And then this kind of looks ugly over here, doesn't it? So maybe that's not the best angle to go for. So then I walk to the other side of the room. And what did I see on the other side of the room? I saw this shot here, which actually looks pretty interesting, doesn't it? This is from the front, looking up towards the stage. I can see the students, I can see their presentation. We can pan the camera and see the judges and the audience, and we can see the students over there at the podium and at the computer using the computer. So this actually seemed like a good angle. So, hmm. I thought that's not too bad. The students would be standing over here probably, getting ready or preparing the computer, and then some students would be over here making the presentation. And we can always pan the camera to see the judges over there. So I thought that's probably not bad. Here's seeing the judges. What do you think of that shot? So we just turn the camera, pan the camera a little bit, and over here are our judges. So, and then here's our audience. This actually looks very interesting, doesn't it? This whole area of our students. So that is a much better position to put the camera. But it's not the normal way. Again, it's a way that I think, what are we trying to shoot? What are we trying to record? The students, the judges. How do we do that? Let's look around the room. Let's find an interesting angle. That looks good to me. So we went ahead and we moved the camera. We moved the tripod up to the front. Oh, not quite the front, but a little bit. And then the stage is right up here, the stage. And the back of the room is back there, judges here, students making presentations up here. And so we put our camera right here up in the front side of the room. You can see here we've got some power because we need to power the machine. The, the uh, camera needs power. We could use battery, but we were worried the battery wasn't going to last long enough, so we went ahead and went with power. Here you can see how the setup is working, which is quite interesting. We've got the camera over here with our photographer here, cinematographer here, and what we've done is we've put a microphone here, shotgun, so right here we're going to be able to hear what the students are saying much better than from the back of the room. Now, lastly, you can see that we've done a good job here of taping down the line, very smart, and putting the sign here, be careful. Now, we, that will not be seen in the camera because the camera is recording, you know, like this. So the camera won't see those things, that's no problem. We are, we're able to get better sound and we're able to stay safe and get better angles, better pictures. So. How did we do that? By moving around, by changing the position, by checking things out, by not just doing the simple, easiest thing. But, key point, we can only do that because we arrived early. We cannot arrive 10 minutes beforehand and check things out and look around. We were also lucky everybody was eating up on their pizza, okay? So that gave us a lot of time to check out the possibilities. Here we can see during the student's presentation how the cameraman, a camera person, is shooting right like that. That's perfect. So some of the key points to remember in location shooting is you need to be careful about losing your equipment. I'll tell you, it's very easy to lose equipment. So the loss of equipment can be expensive and it's very frustrating. How do you avoid that? Well, you need to pack well. Don't just grab things one by one and say, hey, I've got this, I've got that. You need to really put things in boxes or bags, put them together, and that way they're organized. Another thing you can do is you can put numbers on things or tags. I like to put tags on things. So for example, I'll have a bag. This is bag A, and then inside here I'll put one of two, and two of two, and three of three, and four of four for A. So everything will have a tag 
and every bag will have a tag and everything I know where it is. The good thing about tagging or numbering or lettering all of your equipment is when you pack to leave, it's very simple. You say, do we have A bag? Yes, A bag. B bag? Yes, B. C bag? Yes, okay. A1, do we have A1 tripod? Okay. A2 camera? Yes, A2. A3, we got A3? Yes, okay, we're good to go. Then you can be sure. This way you don't lose anything, leave it behind, or maybe have it picked up or stolen by someone because you can pay more attention. The problem is people don't like to do this. Why? Because it takes time, you need to plan, you need to kind of make a checklist. Uh, people are kind of lazy and they want to just hurry up, get the equipment and go. Well, you can do that, but the problem is you may end up losing something, forgetting something. This is a box, and this is a really cool box because it clamps together like this. It also has a handle, like you're traveling, and it has wheels on it. This box is really quite big. This can hold a lot of stuff. It can hold lights and cameras and wires and mixers. So something like this is perfect. You can take it to the location, and you could put a tag on it and say, this is box A, and then maybe you have a backpack, and the backpack is called backpack B, so you've got A and B. That way you can keep track. Of course, when you go on location, you need to take your tripods with you, and we've talked about these before. Here's a monopod. The monopod is just one, one leg. Whoops. Monopod is one leg. Right? And then here's the tripods. So these are inside of our supply cabinet closet. And you can take those out and use them. Again, don't want to lose them or leave them behind. You want to take responsibility and not let things happen and you don't know what to do. So responsibility is things like batteries. Are your batteries charged? Do you have a tripod ready to go? Do you have all the pieces to the tripod? Does your camera have everything it needs? Does it have a lens cover? Does it have a battery? Does it have a power cord? Do you have an extension cord? This is what I mean by take responsibility. Think about it and don't just let it happen by accident. Say, oh, I don't know what to do. No horsing around. That means no playing around. Horsing around in English is the way we say playing, right? No playing around. Playing around means having joking, fun, laughing, ah ha ha, look at this, blah blah blah, playing with things. That is for sure a way to lose and break equipment. And when it's broken, you can't get it back. It's a real downer. Everyone needs to be very careful. And one thing I like to always emphasize is watch out where you're standing. Think about why are you standing here? What's near you? Don't just stand somewhere and you don't know what's near you or what's happening because you may bump something, you may hit something, you may trip on something. The perfect example of this are cords. We've got cords everywhere. We've got audio cords, we've got power cords, we've got video cords. In the studio, just wires everywhere. And when you go on location, you've got wires. They're in there everywhere where people walk. So. Be careful, be aware of that. One thing I like to do is tie off cords. So in this example, this is a power cord. This is power, 110 volts goes to the wall. And what I've done is, is I've looped it around this leg of the chair. Now I didn't tie a tight knot. This is not like, a, like you, you don't tie it and then pull it tight like your shoes. No, 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 no. If you do that, you'll ruin the cord. There's two things that could happen. You could cause some kind of shortage, or if it's an audio cord, it could cause interference or noise in the line, or you could just break the line. That would be very bad. This is just loosely tying it. Now, why do this? The reason is very simple. That if, just in case, someone walks and hits the cord, the cord will pull a little bit, and then the person will say, oh, they'll be careful. They'll say, oh, watch out, right? If they pull it really hard, maybe they'll fall down. But at least it won't pull down the camera or pull down the microphone. That's the reason. That's why I like to tie it down. Not tight, but a little bit looped around. So when you pull it, the line pulls something else. It doesn't pull down your camera. 
that's the worst thing that can happen. Your camera microphone just whoop falls down and uh, game over. Ooh, so many ways for game to be over, I'll tell you that. Okay, so that's tying off or looping your line a bit to help safety. Here's a little further shot of that. So you can see we've got the power here. This is the line to the wall where we plug it in. And I've looped it around this leg here to stop it from being pulled over and knocking down the camera. Okay, so that's basically the location shoot. Locations can be great fun. Locations can be challenging. Locations can be beautiful. Locations can be exciting. But locations can also be dangerous and hectic. And I've always found locations very hard to schedule. And the main reason is because you've got to arrive on time. You've got to be there on time. You've got to get other people there on time. Really, really not an easy thing to do. So have fun on your location, shoot some beautiful video. I look forward to seeing it, but please be careful and don't lose anything. Good luck on your on location shooting. Okay, the next thing on my table is this thing here, which is actually a charger. Now, this is a really handy charger, the, the power pack and the charger, the, the plugs are right together like that, very handy. But what, what does this charge? Well, this charges a kind of battery, which is used in a lot of Sony equipment. And that battery looks like this one here. See that battery there? And you plug it in like this. And then you plug it into the wall to charge it up. Now, why is that handy? Well, these batteries are easy to find. They're not super expensive. They're standard for all Sony equipment. They work in Sony cameras. But you know what else they work in? They work in this device here. What is this device? This thing right here. This, of course, is an LED light. Now, we talked about LED lights in the studio, of course, and you can see I have a diffuser on there. And so that's the LED light. Now, if we take a look at that, on the back, you can have a, a, a plug to plug it in, of course. But you know what else they have? They have a place to put in these batteries. So we can actually put these Sony batteries in and then we can turn on the light. There we go. So a light that you use in the studio can suddenly become portable by using a couple of those Sony batteries in the back. Very handy. Now, it's not gonna last forever, but the good thing is LEDs don't use electricity like the old lights used to. So, you know, better to have some lights than none. And this would be very handy if you're shooting on location, like inside of a building, inside of a hallway, a house, an apartment, something like that where you just don't have good light and you can use this or you don't have sunlight and you cannot get a reflector to work. Okay, so those are some of the things that you can use on location. Of course, remember your bags are the most important thing. So the thing I like to do is tag all of my bags, put numbers on them, put letters on them, and have a checklist. So when you leave, you don't lose anything. Because I tell you, I've lost many things on location. I get all the way back to the studio and say, whoops, what happened to the camera? What happened to the light? So good luck.